Hi, everybody. Welcome to this Meshroom presentation at FMX 2021. I am Benoît Mougeant, and I'm Global Head of Research at Technicolor Production Services. Hello, I'm uh, Fabien Castan, software engineer in the Technicolor research team. So, Production Services is the Technicolor entity dedicated to visual effects and animation with a worldwide footprint. Our diverse family of VFX brand includes MPC Film, Mr. X, and MPC Episodic. Our creative community also provides services for advertising, animation, and gaming with brand names like Micros, MPC Advertising, and The Mill. To achieve this level of creativity, the group needs to gather the best talents and the best tools. And of course, innovation is essential to provide the best tools for the artists. Today, we are presenting a computer vision software called uh, Meshroom. So Meshroom provides a 3D reconstruction pipeline uh, that can be used for the 3D scan of uh, the shooting set or for the 3D scan of film assets. The photogrammetry of the film set can also be a key element to do the match moving of uh, all the shots uh, within the same coordinate system. And since uh, the end of 2020, uh, Meshroom also provides a new pipeline for the creation of HDR panoramas. As you know, the objective of this 360 map is to replicate the lighting of the set environment. Uh, it can also be used in high resolution for direct background replacement in compositing. So here we can see a production example for advertising. So it's a simple example where we have to integrate a CG character in a real environment. Uh, so first, we need to scan the shooting set to be able to put the CG character in situation with real props. And we also need a 360 capture in HDR to retrieve the full dynamic of the onset lighting uh, that we use for the uh, image-based lighting of the CGB. So from the beginning, our focus has been to generate high quality models for photorealistic integration into films and commercials. One key point is to be able to compute on render form. Uh, GPU is required for the depth, depth map estimation as it is the most compute intensive step. Another key point uh, is the nodal interface to enable several things. You can change a parameter and only recompute what is needed. You can even duplicate some nodes to make variants and compare the results. And if you have a specific acquisition setup, you can create your own pipeline and override the default pipeline. So this is the Meshroom interface, which is composed of multiple widgets. So Meshroom interface is made of two parts. The upper part with the high level UI, and the lower part with the nodal pipeline and the parameters that can be adjusted on the selected node. The high level UI is sufficient for simple usage of the software. You just drag and drop your input images in the left hand side. You can visualize each input image in the middle part with different information like the, the metadata of the picture. And you launch the, comput the computation with the start button and you can visualize the 3D results uh, in the right hand side of the screen. If you have access to render farm, you can use the submit button to dispatch the computation on several machines. Now, Meshroom historical pipeline is the 3D reconstruction. It is composed of two main steps. The first step is the structure from motion that computes the points cloud of the scene and the different camera positions with their intrinsic parameters. This is called the sparse reconstruction. The second step is the multiple view stereo pipeline to compute the dense estimation of the surface. The last node of step one is the structure for motion node. The last node of step two is the texturing node. And now Fabien is going to show you this pipeline with the latest release. 
So for this presentation, I'm using a pre-recorded screencast to give you an overview of the user interface. And here is a simple example uh, with 15 images taken taken from a cheap smartphone camera. Uh, we can see that the images are properly recognized uh, with a green icon. Uh, if uh, we don't have the metadata at all, the icon will be red. If we have metadata but the image is not known in the sensor database, the icon will be orange. In that case, you can edit the sensor database, which is a simple text file. So here we can see the result of the sparse reconstruction. Uh, so Meshroom managed to get uh, all the camera reconstructed, and uh, we get uh, 25,000 3D points. We can also see those 3D points uh, on the input images. There are three status. So feature point extracted in 2D, in blue here. Um, then we can toggle the button to see the landmarks, so the red uh, in red. And uh, we can also see the position of the 2D features and the corresponding reprojection of the 3D landmark. And the segment in between is the reprojection error. And finally, uh, we can see uh, in orange uh, the points that were matched to other images uh, but could not be reconstructed in 3D at the end. Uh, now we open the final result. Um, it's a 3D uh, textured model. Uh, we can click in the 3D viewer on the I button to toggle the visualization. We can use the control key uh, to uh, focus directly on a single layer, as in Photoshop. And the same shortcut works on the double click on the graph nodes. The viewer provides the uh, option to visualize the geometry, the wireframe, the textured version, as well as the uh, color-coded uh, normals. If we want to have a look uh, in detail at the intermediate steps, uh, we can directly visualize the estimation of the depth maps. So in the 2D viewer with a color-coded representation, uh, but we can also load it in 3D to see the information provided by this input image. So usually the final result is too dense for direct usage. Uh, most of the time, people are doing some manual topology of the mesh uh, in ZBrush, for instance. Uh, here, we are making a simple decimation so we will create a decimation node. The default value of the decimation is uh, 2. Uh, as we can see, the design of the graph editor has changed a lot to improve uh, visualization of the nodes and the connection uh, between them. Also, during the computation, uh, the nodes that are being used are locked, and we can continue to edit the graph. Uh, uh, we can also see when the nodes have the duplicated status with this icon, and when we change the value, the status changes. And now, while this decimation is computing, we are creating a new texturing node, connect to it, and launch a computation, and it is accumulated in the render queue. Now we can just look at the result of the um, different uh, decimation level. So the original uh, mesh with a full density, and then the version uh, decimated by a factor of 2, and the version decimated by a factor of 10. So while this texturing is computing, I just want to show you also a note to uh, upload your result on Sketchfab. Uh, so you enter your, the, your API token from your account, and you connect the data you want to upload. And then when you will compute the node, it will upload the data to Sketchfab. When we have computed our uh, final texture on the low resolution mesh, we can uh, see that we keep the visual quality on the lighter model, uh, which is more convenient for uh, later use. The second pipeline in Meshroom is the HDR pipeline. It is composed of three main steps. The first step is the LDR to HDR fusion to combine the different densities for each camera position. 
The second step is the estimation of the internal and external parameters of the cameras. And the third step is the warping and stitching of the different images. After step one, you can visualize the HDR images. After step two, you can see the alignment of the cameras around the nodal point. And at the end of step three, you can see your final 360 panorama image. Now, Fabien is going to show you this pipeline with the new, with the latest release. So in the Meshroom interface, uh, we first choose the kind of panorama we want to create. So here we will create a new panorama fisheye HDR pipeline. Uh, we drag and drop our images. We can use uh, either JPEG or RAW files or pre-converted images like DNG or EXR. So the first thing to do, as usual, uh, is to save our project as it defines where the data will be stored. Now we compute the first steps of the pipeline. So um, it has automatically detected the number of brackets, but we can also override it. Uh, in the image viewer, we can visualize the metadata. And if we look at the first node of the pipeline, the sampling, uh, so this sampling node will uh, select the most reliable pixel across the different brackets uh, to estimate the camera response function. Then the calibration node implements two standard methods to calibrate this camera response function uh, that we can then visualize uh, in the 2D viewer. And finally, uh, the LDR to HDR merge node fuse our LDR images together. In the image gallery, we can toggle the bracketing button to see the fused HDR images and then visualize them in the viewer. Uh, the viewer is 8-bit by default, but you can enable the HDR button to have a full floating point visualization. And you can then adjust gain and gamma to check highlights and dark areas. When we have our HDR images, uh, we can then start to extract feature points uh, that we can visualize in the viewer. Then the panorama init nodes uh, estimate the fisheye circle automatically. Uh, but you can also edit it manually. So, so it's green when it's uh, automatically estimated, and then it switched to yellow uh, for the manual edition. After that, uh, the panorama estimation node uh, computes the relative poses between the camera, and we can see uh, the links between the images as uh, 3D points uh, projected onto a 3D sphere. We can now compute the stitching part. Uh, so first, uh, we um, compute the panorama warping knot to warp images into the equirectangular coordinate system. Um, on this node, you can define the final resolution of the panorama. Uh, by default, it is estimated automatically. And you can adjust the upscale ratio to determine the trade-off you want between the amount of upscale and the amount of downscale pixels. But you can also manually set the output resolution of your panorama directly. Uh, then the panorama seams node tries to uh, reduce artifact on the transition between images by uh, selecting uh, optimal location for the seams. The panorama compositing node uh, will fuse all the warped images together uh, using the multiband blending algorithm. And the panorama merging node will just aggregate the result together into an image. So we can double click on this node and visualize our panorama. If we uh, enable the checkerboard background, we can see that we have some uh, missing part where the alpha is empty uh, on the border of the image. And these small uncovered area are filled up with the latest uh, node with the final image processing node using uh, just using the neighboring colors. And finally, we can right click on the latest node and select uh, open folder to retrieve our final image. Now we will look at the other use case. Uh, when we use standard optics with a motorized headset, so we create a panorama HDR pipeline, we drag and drop our folder with all our raw images, and we drop the XML file from the motorized headset. So it simply sets the file path uh, in the panorama init node on the XML config parameter. 
Now I just load a pre-computed scene to show you the result. So here we can see our panorama stitched. And I created an alternative branch in the graph with the debug option enabled. Um, so it shows the image borders in green and the optimized cut in red to visualize where the transitions are located. So when we have a data set like this one with more than 200 images, uh, it takes time to compute. Uh, but um, as for the 3D reconstruction workflow, uh, this process can be computed on render farm, and then the different steps are parallelized on several machines. Uh, regarding the technical aspects, uh, here is a technological uh, stack uh, under the hood. So Meshroom is a graphical user interface written in Python and QML. And uh, Alice Vision is a core computer vision uh, framework that does the processing in C++ and CUDA. And there are also uh, several C++ plugins to load the data in Meshroom. Uh, we rely as much as possible on uh, standard open source file formats like uh, OpenXR, OBG, and Alambic. And we also rely on many open source libraries uh, developed by the FreeFix community, but also by uh, mathematical and computer vision uh, communities. So just a summary of the key feature of the latest release. Uh, so this version uh, includes improvement to the panorama using tiles to generate large panoramas. Um, we have also improved the robustness for both photogrammetry and panorama uh, with more stable feature point extraction. So the notion of normal or high density that people were used to adjust uh, is very different from the previous release. Uh, the idea is that you don't need to adjust this parameter anymore and the default value should be fine for all data sets. Regarding the user interface, uh, the graph editor has been redesigned. So as we have seen in the demo, uh, it improves node visualization and connection between nodes, implement locking system per node, and provide a new render queue system. Uh, and finally, the mesh quality has been improved with a new post-processing of the surface cut. So you can look at uh, the release note online to, uh, at, uh, to have uh, all the details. Okay, so as you probably know, Meshroom and Alice Vision are available on GitHub. They are released under the Mozilla license and PLV2. You can download the pre-built binaries for both for Windows and for Linux. And contributions are welcome for the software or the documentation. Uh, the Alice Vision team is always willing to share new ideas and to start collaborations with researchers, with developers, and with 3D scanning experts. Now, a year ago, we created a non-profit organization uh, around the founding members of the project. The goal of this association is to set up an open source ecosystem around photogrammetry techniques. And today we are happy to announce that Epic Games is supporting this initiative with a mega grant, which makes Epic Games the second corporate sponsor after Technicolor Group. Uh, so regarding the next steps of the project, uh, so um, we are now working on a new pipeline uh, dedicated to camera tracking. Uh, so here are some preliminary tests that uh, we have done on a production data set. Uh, this is a feature film uh, Adieu les cons, directed by uh, Albert Dupontel. Uh, this sequence is in a studio environment, uh, a roundabout with some uh, CG extensions. So for our test, we have used a really small uh, photogrammetry uh, to create a set survey to provide a reference layout for the different camera shots. And here we can see one plate uh, with a CG white cube uh, integrated into the shot uh, to check the alignment of our 3D camera motion with the uh, real footage. And uh, exactly the same shot, uh, but, but with a full photogrammetry point cloud in overlay.
Uh, another perspective for the project uh, is the improvement of the depth map set regarding both performance and quality. And uh, the recent uh, mega grant will provide us some resources to progress on this topic. Uh, we are also exploring uh, new uh, areas with the IRIT Research Lab in Toulouse uh, to integrate photometric stereo algorithm into measurement. Okay, this is it. Thank you very much for attending Meshroom session. Here you have uh, the links if you want to reach us and to follow us. Now Fabien and myself will be available to answer your questions during the Q&A session. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Bye-bye for now. See you in the Q&A session.